Welcome back to The Fate of Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes Weekly D&D 5th Edition Actual Play Campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running our game as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Wilhelm von Kessel, the human swashbuckler rogue. And we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Denitis, playing Rudy Whitaker, the shifter eldritch knight. And Joel Gorman, playing Wrath, the Azamar warlock. Thank you for joining us once again. We are the Dungeon Dudes, and Kelly and I post new videos every other Tuesday and every Thursday over on our YouTube channel where we cover everything D&D, so be sure to check out the channel for lots more from us. You can also join us on Tuesday evenings when we broadcast the campaign on Twitch. Check us out from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as an audio-only podcast as well. And with that, let us return to Drakenheim. Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible. While simmering tensions between rival factions boil over into outright war, the power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all. The fate of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, Rudy, Wilhelm, and Wrath were making their way through the ruins of Etheria deep in the Ochtenwald forest. After uncovering the abandoned camp shared by several of the professors and apothecaries of Altbrook University, they uncovered the evidence of dissent amongst the apothecaries. For the different groups have traveled here seem to have different goals and plans in mind going through their camp and researching their notes. They've learned that the expedition led by Lizanne Bean and Urian Muller, bringing several students from the university, including Rudy's son, Corbin, have been attacked or come into conflict with the other apothecaries, including Everett Freed and others known as Veers and Young and Sina Rinks. Our heroes are now journeying deep into the ruins to find out if Muller and Bean have escaped or what has become of the expedition and where the other, and possibly locate the other encampment of the apothecaries as they try to deal with the situation. So, leaving the campsite, you journey into the ruins. I'll have each of you roll me a d6. Mm -hmm. Four. Two. Two. Okay. How are you traveling into the ruins? So I think from what we remember from uh, Meepo before he gave his life to be our well-deserved distraction, he told us that there was a spell. No, wait, no, it was the other one. Meepo did nothing. It's the other one that told us. Kippers. That, Kippers. Kippers is still with us. And Kippers, Kippers is, still, is still with you, and it has a lot of trepidation as you move into the ruined area. Uh, then I choose to cast invisibility on Kippers, myself, um, Rudy, and Wilhelm. Can you affect that many targets? If not... You can affect four targets with a fifth level spell slot. Yeah. Oh, then yes, you can. So I cast Invisibility at level five, and I will okay. for at least an hour. We've got one hour of... Then let us move quickly and directly. Mm -hmm. And also straight ahead, because I, I don't know. Can someone like walk ahead with a stick and like poke it into the ground to show that they're like where they're walking? I um. You can see the lean, like the ground move. No. Otherwise, you'll have to hold hands. You know. You know. No. 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 We do the. <clears throat> we do like the kindergarten trick. Um, we give Kippers one end of the rope, and then all of us are holding on to the rope, 
and we walk. And there's just a floating rope? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like my idea. Someone ahead has to drag a stick into the ground, so there's like this like line that's moving in the ground. Well, kip- oh, that Kippers work? would be the one that would know where we're going, no? Or do we know where the... I think Kippers are. is leading the way. Kippers, Kippers, do you know where the runes are? Where the humans hide? No. Okay. <laughs> I can lead you to Trathesia's home. Mm. You're supposed to be the offering. That's where we're where I'm supposed to take you. Yeah, we're we're gonna find more offerings on the way. Oh. Yeah, we need to find um, those that trespass and disobey Trathesia. We will offer them first, and we will be make a deception s- check. Secondary offerings, kind of like. Does he I, get advantage? Because are they still charmed? Is Kipper still yeah, charmed? Yeah, Chipper. Yeah, yeah. He, you are my thrall. Uh, Twenty-seven. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you have the same magic as 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 Meepo and the others. You must be a great leader amongst your. Uh, you you have like really impressed. Yes. Well, uh, of the three of us, I am considered the leader of this group. Mm. Uh, they mm. both will follow me to the ends of the earth. They both do my bidding as mm. as I request. Watch as I summon a sandwich. Rudy, pass me a sandwich. No. I see my magic has failed. <laughs> Here's one. Well. <laughs> If, if my companion needs a sandwich, then we should give him a sandwich. The magic runs through him. <laughs> well, he, is, he is charmed by my... If you just give him a sandwich, he's, he, he'll eat the sandwich, but if you teach him how to make a sandwich, then well, he'll eat all sandwiches for his life. You know how to make a sandwich. No. You're I not giving point, him the I'm, tools. So. I, I take the sandwich back. Oh. <laughs> Disregard this demonstration of my power. <laughs> And lead us to the ruins. <laughs> lead us through the ruins. Kind of take us on the regular path that yeah. you go on. Drag the stick. So we can <laughs> going. Yeah, we're all talking to like, I, there's a floating sandwich now? I don't know. Mm. <laughs> okay. Wait, Meepo has a tail, right? Yes. Yeah, so Meepo can walk ahead. Someone well, got the Meepo is Meepo, Actually, Meepo's in several I, pieces. I apologize. Meepo <laughs> deserved Kippers. as well. Kippo. Kippers. <laughs> Kippers. Kippo and Meepers. <laughs> Kippo and Meepers? Oh, I'm writing those down for people to come all day. Uh, Kippers, I will hold Kippers' tail, and then followed by Wilhelm and Rudy. We'll keep Wilhelm in the middle, so if the ghosts attack you for your genealogy, at least we have a chance. Uh, I swear that you you laugh, but the ghosts are going to come after you for your namesake, and we are so screwed. We've established in canon that Wilhelm is afraid of ghosts. Like it's oh, happened, really? It's happened before, yeah. yes. Oh, no. Yeah. So I... You're definitely in between us, then. Yeah, I choose to be between you, because I'm like, if any ghosts appear, I need you to protect me. <laughs> I will be afraid. Oh, there's ghosts. I can see one. There's faces. He, there's faces. What, this. No, that's a thing. When you're when you, in the shapes of the mist, your eyes play tricks on you, and 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 generally people have this thing where they they like to see faces and things that aren't faces. I'm it's, pretty sure that's an elven a, man. That's an elven man. I don't. Oh, know you're right. <laughs> it's that there's faces. I as just a fun. Um, do I gener- I can hear where like where your voice is. I oh, just want to. Use press the digitation to like puff, just a, on the back of your neck. Or what was that? Who touched me? Blow on it, but. <laughs> and we make our way to the towards the ruins. Making your way through the ruins, <laughs> the mists and the woods and the glades above, around the strange remnants of elven construction that bear the ancient roadways and streets of the city of Etheria. Mm. Now little remains of the buildings, save the colonnades constructed by the elves. For uh, for indeed, while the elves were capable of raising great structures, as, as you've seen, the forest here has certainly swallowed up whatever remains of, of much of that. Yet, here and there you detect that the ruins 
that you move through were perhaps once great domed structures, gazebos, wonderful gardens, uh, um, and perhaps even great palaces of, of some kind, but hardly a, um, very, very little stone lay rests upon stone anymore um, for anything that was of any great size has long been long collapsed and been swallowed once again by the forest nevertheless you can tease out the various roadways that must have once been been here a pattern that as you feel it wrath you feel like the roads themselves correspond to the channels of magical power that extrude from the Evertree itself. And that they are almost meant to resonate in parallel, as if to a distant and half-remembered place. Nestled within several of the great roots that form arches that these roadways move underneath. You feel the forest sinking almost into a bowl-like depression before the Evertree. That the, with the convergence of the streets and the buildings perhaps must have been the center of great Etheria. Here you pass by bro a broken wall and colonnade that must have once been a colossal structure, something the size of perhaps a great stadium or amphitheater of some kind, yet the rock beneath you, the sort of the, sort of the, the bleachers that people would have sat in are now overgrown and by rock, dust, and vines, and vegetation. Yet, some of the structures still remain in the center here. At the heart of the ruins, the spirits grow more restless and begin to manifest. You see the ancient elven ghosts, many of them tearing at their clothing in despair. Several of them, the ghosts, mime their last moments, be it the tyranny of the Von Kessels or the tyranny of the Sorcerer Kings that ended their lives. The collective trauma remembered by these ancient elves played out for you with their silent screams and whispers of rage. Several of the spirits flitter, luminescent, They're the ectoplasm which composes them, a soft blue-green, bearing weaponry as a group of these elven soldiers rush to defend a position before being seemingly annihilated, only to play out the scene again. In other places, the ghosts are little more than wisps, faces, languishly, languidly moving across the glades, mournfully looking upon a ruin. And as you catch their eye for a moment, it's almost as if the ghost is trying to remember what was once built here. As you come towards the center of the ruins, there is a measure of familiarity to the construction that you see, for what is before you reminds you of that great chamber in the lighthouse on the Crystal Coast near Ashafen. Here is a great archway where there is a dais built, flanked on three sides by anchored floating delirium crystals and ancient elven statues that regard a glimmering pool 
of arcane power. The spirits here look on in quiet reverence, except for an agitated few, for a peculiar sight mars what would be a scene of serene mourning and ancient memory. Upon the dais, surrounded by furious, wailing spirits, is a great wall of fire. The flames form a circular barrier, their heat radiating outward. The flames themselves are a golden red. And as you emerge the spirits, as they race towards the flames, recoil from the energy. And so several of these spirits angrily regarding the magic here are held at bay by the light of this wall of fire. Does the fire, uh, lo looking upon the scene, the fire is a wall, yes. but it is not a dome. It is, it is not a dome, but the radiating heat um, you, you see as the spirits do try to fly a, a, above it, something is holding them at bay as they try to fly in from the top. Have we approached the scene yet or are we still on the outskirts? You're still on the outskirts. Um, I might, if we can get closer without disrupting the spirits here, mm. I might be able to climb on top of one of the ruins to at least look into the circle to see. You can fly. Right, I can also walk up walls. So, I mean, yes. <laughs> okay. Either way. Would the two of you like to get a better vantage point? Yeah. Um, I mean, I would. I don't know. I hand the tail of Kippers to uh, Rudy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Where would you like to climb up? I'm going to... Oh, you want to go that far in? That's, I okay. mean, in order to see uh, uh, into it, I was going to climb up to there. Is okay. That, um, that's that's a little closer than, if yeah. You, yeah. Like if I imagine, I wouldn't be able to see over the flames from here, but I mean, I can try. Perhaps that first. from one of the trees, though. Okay. Give me a perception check. Where did Willow go? I don't know. I got a I got a cobalt's tail. That's all I know. Uh, that's gonna be a fifteen. Climbing up the tree you can see in the center of the flames are four people huddled close. It's Mueller and Bean. Bean. Mm -hmm. And we're looking for Corbin as well. Mm -hmm. In the center of the figures, what you can just make out is there are um, two young humans, uh, a man and a woman, and a smaller, either perhaps a halfling or a gnome. And then there is an older man with them. The man is holding one hand to his chest and another raised up above him, where, he is, where in his hands you can see a symbol of the sacred flame. Mm -hmm. The man is clad in black and he has a wide brimmed hat with a buckle on it. Um, and several, and all, all across him you can see that he's wearing various depictions of various holy symbols according to different interpretations of the sacred flame uh, and perhaps even symbols of older gods as well. Um, and he has um, a thin pair of horn-rimmed glasses, um, and his face is ga gaining a little bit of stubble to it, 
Um, but uh, he has otherwise rather hard and angular features. The young students with him, some of them are clutching some bags and books with, with, with them. Um, and you, you, you can hear, you can sense immediately from them that they're not sure what to do or how long they're, they're, they're going to be here. But you can see the beads of sweat dripping down the face of the man who is ostensibly holding the spell. Are either of the younger students Corbin? No. No. Okay. Um, I don't know where my allies are because we're all invisible. Well, we, I mean, I didn't go anywhere. Same. So I, we're, we're staying back with um, the kobold. Okay, I'm going to climb back down the tree and go to the place that I was standing before and be like, friends, are you here? They are. <laughs> okay, great. It's Mueller, possibly Bean, and two students, not Corbin. I don't want to alert the spirits to our presence, but I also think it could be beneficial for me to climb back up the tree and call out to them. Do you think that is ill-advised? <laughs> um, uh, well, that's definitely going to attract some spirits. Right. Is there a way we can get them out? Or maybe we can lure the spirits away, giving them a chance to escape. And Wrath, could you do your mand talk thing with them? Is there any chance you can communicate? If you fly up and get an eye view on them, can you telepathically let yeah. them know that we are here to help? That's the word. Uh, yes. I'm gonna try that. So I'm gonna fly over. Now the thing is I have to be within 30 feet and line of sight. So how close am I gonna have to be to this flaming sphere? The you that is the point where the spirits are converging around it. Because the the wall of fire <clears throat> radiates heat twenty feet outward. And that is that he, radiating heat is what is keeping these spirits at bay. No, you are right? invisible. And one of the things though that is curious is that you can see that the light that is cast by this wall of fire causes the partially invisible spirits to become visible. Interesting. I believe we have two options. We either dispatch these Spirits lay them to rest, Ugh. or lure them away, and then reconvene with the one that, once we give them an opportunity, we can catch up with them after they have found another safer location. They seem to be trapped. Well, I mean, uh, it should be no problem dispatching a few spirits, right? 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 How do you kill a ghost? We, we've done it before. At um, the barracks, we killed lots of ghosts. I guess you're right. I think you just stab them with a sword that is magical. Oh, okay. As long as it's not a regular, everyday, normal sword, I think you're okay. Mm. You okay. have a moon axe, I have a moon rapier, and you have lasers from your hands. Well, I'm hearing it's the moon's power that really does Spirits it. Spirits don't like moons is what I can surmise. <laughs> this might be incorrect information, but it's what I've gathered in my brief research with mm. spirits. Um, now, I don't like spirits. So... You're more of a beer guy. That was an adequate joke, Rath. I didn't know you were one for comedy. <laughs> I thought you were making a very profound statement. <laughs> <laughs> I do not understand. Um, I guess the question is, do we want to use ourselves, or do we want to maybe use our magic as distraction? Um, Sorry, more, more hit okay, right, magic. Right. Okay, I'm looking around. Is there, there's some statues of elves. Can I 
disguise myself as one of the statues of the elves. As a statue or as an elf? As an elf in in the in the flesh, but as it was one of the statues. Like taking on the characteristics. Is it is it like Okay, like as a living elf? Yeah, version okay. of one of the statues. Where are you going with this? I wanna try to so last time I was able to convince them being Elias Drexel, but this time I imagine because I'm I don't know who their master is or who who they mm. who their leader is. I want to try to pick someone that they might have recognized from the real world and try to just use it as like a lure to bring them away from uh, the fire. You can certainly try. <laughs> That's all I needed to hear. So I could try to uh, lure them away from the from the dome. Maybe we draw their attention towards us. I've got an idea. Do you have any instruments? Uh, that is the first instruments? time I've been mm -hmm. asked that question. I don't think any of you do, unless you do. Really. I do have a horn. Yeah. Okay. Because that won't undo your invisibility, right? Or Technically, no. I think I can blow a horn. Where are you going with this? I'm thinking just like to direct them and go into the forest one way and uh, blow the horn, but then you can move, right? Yeah. Just make some noise. Make some noise. Um, okay, I'm going to try. Yeah, Rudy, you're... This might work. I'm going to start playing the horn. Like right where we are? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, okay. You guys go around. I will begin to play the horn. Kippers, hide in the trees somewhere. Go back. Go back a little bit. All right. Okay. As you play the horn, <laughs> give me a performance. <laughs> I got a got a natural one, so I get a seven. Um, and I drop the horn and I step on it. And I break my horn. The discordant performance. The ethereal spirits and then you are hear, son of a are are my horn. the ethereal spirits are sent into a frenzy by your discordant performance. Unable to detect where the sounds originated from as they echo um, incessantly through the woods and, and trees, they are not distracted by any means and seem to regard it as part of the of whatever has been going on here. Um, they are so enraged that they, they throw themselves towards the fire no! even more, more so, and it seems like even more spirits have been drawn, oh. but unable to de determine that the, the horn is coming from you, the spirits that are drawn closer instead fly directly towards the uh, wall of fire. <clears throat> what was that? <laughs> what far, are... far from warding them off, you have instead attracted more spirits to uh, to come and pay attention to the flames <laughs> with your miserable course of action. That's not how you play the horn, Raph. <laughs> this is my first attempt ever at playing this horn. I don't even know why I have it. <laughs> I imagine it was just like, you know, one horn, and you were like, bah, 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 trying to make like trumpet sounds. It came more out like a keening wail, like someone strangling a cat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> more like the shriek of a banshee than any sort of artful mu musical performance. I to try to make up for my obviously miserable failure. <laughs> It's the worst talent show you've ever been to. Um, I'm going to just try, because I don't know where these guys are now. I hope they left. I hope you left. I am going to reveal my position. Okay. I will don the disguise. I'm going to go back to square one. I'm going to don the disguise. I'm going to try to become, I'm going to look like an elf. Okay. And I call out um, with 
thaumaturgy. Do you speak elf? Elven? <laughs> Do you speak elven? These are all nonsense words. I'm gonna say, I know one word that uh, you've said in Elvish. Do, do you want me like next to you invisibly telling you some <laughs> Elvin phrases to say? Give me something, give me something. Uh, what do you, what do you want to say and I'll translate? Oh, I, I want to tell them that uh, leave the sphere alone. Uh, I have returned to uh, lead you again. I repeated in fluent Elvin that is really hard for you to probably interpret or recreate. Are you trying to whisper this to him? Yes. Okay, give me a stealth check. I should have picked a similar uh, sentence. That's like going to be a, a 35. Okay. As Wrath reveals himself and disguises himself as one of the elves, two of the spirits fly towards you. So put yourselves on the edge of the map. Or over here, or over here? Or yeah, over over there. Yeah, that's great. Okay, yeah. perfect. And so I'm invisibly next to you, yeah. whispering. And then Rudy, you're... I'm kind of a bit further. Yeah. We'll say that, Rudy, you're at least 60 feet further back. Okay. 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 Two of the elven spirits fly up to you, Wrath. Okay. The closest two. And they say... Okay, so they speak... And have you heard Old English? Yeah. And you know how weird it sounds compared to like modern English? Yeah. These elves are basically speaking an ancient dialect of Elven. So I can make out like 40%, 50? And what they cry out at Wrath is they say, Ancestor, they torment us with their keening music, with their burning flames. Their religion, their music, their culture is destroying ours. <laughs> I attempt to repeat this back to you. They hate the music. No more horn. And they don't like anything that's going on here. Get rid of the horn, get rid of the flames. They, they defile this, this place with their very presence, this most sacred of places. Help us destroy them. Um, oh no. I, I translate this over to you. Perhaps tell them that they are guests and they are confused and that we should help them understand. Um, all right, Wilhelm, give me another stealth check with disadvantage. Disadvantage? Because you're speaking. Uh, that's going to be 25. Okay. Can I see the creature? You can see the, the spirits, yes. I want to speak into its mind and it can understand me. I can't understand it, but it's gonna understand me. Um, there are other abominations that have entered your, that have entered our realm. These are not the defilers. The ones you seek are monsters, monstrosities. Okay, give me a persuasion check. Ooh, uh, 22. They say, yes, we know. There are many great monsters from the terrible dragon to the other defilers, but these ones have come with them. We must destroy them, we must. Please, ancestor, please honor your ancestors. Did I understand any of that? No, no. Yeah. I will have to translate. And you'll need to give me another stealth check with this advantage. Luckily, because of uh, rogue abilities, I technically can't roll lower than a 25. Okay. You can't roll lower than a 25? I have a plus 15 to stealth, okay. and I, I'm, I can't roll lower than a 10 in it. Mm -hmm. wow. The spirits respond confused, but, he, but Wilhelm is able to translate again. What do you say to them? This is how I'm going to try to help the situation. Most of you go after the other, the others that trespass. I will help you deal with these ones. 
And I'm gonna try to convince, I wanna try to convince some of them to, especially the extras that showed up, I wanna try to convince some of them to leave to try to even it back on. Mm, okay, the, uh, give me another persuasion check. <sighs> I get a seven. They say, no, no! We must defend the ancient gate from these, these ones who would abuse its power. This one, this one tries to tap into things that he does not, that he does not understand. He means to slip between, to hide. Um, translate, translate, translate. Can you tell me where the others are? These other trespassers on our lands. They respond by saying, no, we are the guardians of the gate. We do not go any further from, from, from here. Please, help. Why are you, what are you waiting for? You do great dishonor to, to the names of, uh, and memories of those that came before you. They're really, a, they don't like you. <laughs> I'm translating, they don't like you. Do better. <laughs> <laughs> Another stealth check, Wilhelm. Wow. Uh, that's gonna be uh, 27, or 28, sorry. Oh, I don't know if this is gonna work. Um... Tell them they're friends. I don't know if that will work. I have no idea. <laughs> Uh, they let me talk to them. I can convince these trespassers to leave these lands um, and never return and also not let their, their friends return. I can say that better. Uh, I can say it more eloquently. Okay. Uh, I will... Let me, let me speak with the defilers of the gate and right. I will convince them I need, to leave. I need another persuasion check then in that case. Okay, 16. Okay, they respond angrily and say, you would let these trespassers leave with their lives? No, no, it's <laughs> They still don't like you. You would give them the grace of diplomacy when they have shown nothing but rudeness to us? Uh, Wilhelm has his hand on this crossbow. <laughs> uh, um, Wrath for getting angry. Here, here, here's, here's the deal. I'm looking for three successful points before three failures. You only have one success so far, and two failures. Um, so choose your next words carefully. Uh, fine, I will, as your elder, I will dispatch them myself. Be gone! You, uh, you have disgraced us with letting them get so close. Ooh. You, I will take care of your failings. Okay. Give me intimidation with advantage. Ooh. Uh, uh, 21. All right. Emboldened by your change in spirit, they say, ah, that is the fire of our youth that we expect to see. Yes, we are more than happy to help you destroy them. Let us make up for our failures. Uh, I look past the ones that I'm speaking with, and I pick, uh, I will pick two spirits, and I point. This one, and this one may stay. The rest of you must leave now and sulk in your failures for letting the enemy come so close and, and and dis defile our sacred land. All right, um, give me your choice, persuasion or intimidation. Uh, intimidation. All right. I am I want to intimidate. Intimidate! <laughs> intimidate! Uh, okay, I get a 20. All righty. The ghosts, satisfied with a display of, el of elfish fury, <laughs> dissipate. 
All except the two? Or even the two? The the two that you pointed out to uh, are some of the weaker spirits that were like barely manifesting. Okay. And so the spirits, Perfect. they disperse. And I will. You suspect that they might not be gone for long. Yes. Uh, we must work quickly. Um, Bruce. Oh. Rath, what'd you say to them? I, I, I convinced them that I was one of their kin. Oh. And through the translations of Wilhelm, I was able to dispatch them, but only for a temporary moment in time. We must act quickly and convince this one now to drop their shield and come with us, or they will return much more angry. Mm. Much uh, angrier. Mueller. We're jumping on the other side of the flame wall. Hey! Hey! One of the, the younger voices said, Professor, it sounded like they were calling your name. We have dispatched the spirits temporarily in order to let you drop the fire shield so that we may talk. We have traveled far to find you. What? <laughs> Who? Do we need to speak louder? It's, is it a volume issue? I am Wilhelm von Kessel. I have been dispatched from Altbrook. There have been... Von Kessel? Yes. On behalf of the Duke. The flames... subside. As the flames subside, you see the sweat-drenched Urien Muller, garbed in a black coat with a wide-brimmed black hat, holy symbols of various deities and the sacred, and most prominently the sacred flame, pinned to him, uh, and a pouch filled with various superstitious incenses and oils strapped uh, to to his his side. Um, he he. Um, car- carries with him in one hand a crossbow. With him are three of his other students. Uh, a young woman, a younger man, and a younger halfling woman as well. Um, the three of them clutch their few belongings that they were able to scrounge from, from their camp and look, look shocked and afraid. They all look like they haven't slept either in like a day or two. But as Muller releases the protective spell, he says, Von Kessel! That's right. Well, thank you. I am, uh, you would be our king. Uh- that is the goal. I have been making the tour of Westamar, and when I came across Altbrook, I was informed of some issues at the university, and those issues have led me on a long journey here. After your business associates, not from we came across your camp. And from there, I gathered that there were differing opinions amongst yes. those that are out here. Indeed, there were. Uh, we should leave this place. Perhaps we return to our camp. Is it safe? The camp has been secured for the time being. Let us get out of here before the spirits return in force. Why were you here? Why this spot? The spirits seem to be protecting it. Exactly. This is where this, this is the place where the ancient elves came into this world, one of them. The spirits of them linger here the strongest. It is remarkable that they are not even attacking us very now, in in this very moment. But I came here because I knew that I could hold them at bay and that the spirits would at least hold, hold Freed and Rinks at bay until we could think of some way to escape. Well, we know there are others with you. Where are they? We were separated. 
Separated where and how? I will tell you everything, but we are not safe here. The spirits will return in force, and they will tear us limb from limb, mind from body, soul from mind, if we do not leave now. Well, let's go. Let's go back to camp. Follow us. Very good. I was invisible this whole time, so. Yeah, no one has any idea. <laughs> yeah, yes, me too. <laughs> okay. I will, as the group of you return, flee, you can all roll me a d6. Five. One. Two. Okay. <laughs> as you turn to flee. So I assume I've, I've also, I've dropped my disguise. Yeah. As you turn to, to flee, the elven spirits sense the desperation in all of you and begin to converge as you race through the ruins. What do you do to avoid them and keep Muller and the students safe? Um... Muller says, I have been holding these spells as best I can to keep them at bay. I have very little left. Um, can I, with the, with the spirits converging, can I like s quickly survey the area for like a quick and not obvious pathway out of here? Like one that maybe like between logs and trees and stuff that we could, that I could get them to duck down and like us try to sneak out? that you could try to like help lead everyone else in stealth away from the spirits yes. and pass them. Cool. First, what I need from you is an investigation check to even find it. That's gonna be a 21. There might be a way through the creeks and lower trees and, the, and leading them all along the roots. Fleeing the spirits with stealth may be possible via this route. What I will need is a couple successful stealth checks. Wilhelm, if you give me a stealth check to lead the group, I'll tell you how many people you can help that won't need to roll. Ooh. 32. Okay. You can keep yourself and two others hidden, leading them along the way for that. Who do you want to help hide? I will take the two youngest of the students, or the... Okay. Yeah. Muller says, very well. May the flame watch over us, and he casts Bless on the rest of you. Mm. I'll need stealth checks from the two of you. Ooh. And you can add uh, D4s to those. That helps, that helps. Where are my D4s? Oh, there you go. Okay. Oh, I want to use this D4. Lucky ducky D4. Come on. It was, the, it was a one. Yes. <laughs> um, 24. 27. Okay. There's a moment where the group of you hide beneath one of the boughs as several of the looming spirits flutter overhead, crying out in madness, babbling and sniffing, looking for that semblance of mortality that they detect as you huddle and hide for a tense few minutes before the spirits dissipate and Wilhelm is able to lead you all back to safety. I want to, and I'll, I'll, I'll communicate with uh, Kippers, because I can communicate with him telepathically anywhere on this plane. And I'm gonna tell him to meet us back at the okay. camp. So he'll just double back. We got more. Uh... <laughs> yeah, we got more offerings. Don't worry. <laughs> As you make your way back to the camp, finally, Muller sighs. What a mess. I will tell you as much as I can. He introduces his uh, his other students, um, Nicholas, Dora, and Elmo. Um, 
these three have, uh, there was a, uh, well, yesterday, a few of our, I don't know what has led you here. You are, but something is clearly wrong for the king of Westamar to have come this deep into the forest looking for what? We are after Everett Freed. He was working on experiments at Altbrook University that led to the unfortunate death of a very high-ranking member of our group, a member of the Amethyst Academy and an asset in, in the war that we are facing against the evils of Drakenheim. Blasted. I knew that Freed's ambitions would be the end of us. Not only that, but the students at that school were put into danger. He was kidnapping them. He was changing them into something else. This includes the Duke's son. It is my job, personally, to ensure that the Duke's son is returned in whatever capacity we are able to bring him back in order for us to pull together Westamar once again. On top of that, there are several students and people involved here that are all in danger, some of them very important and valuable to us. We need to ensure their safety, and we need to ensure that we put an end to Everett Freed's madness. You are contending more than with just Everett Freed, I'm afraid, my king. The entire half of us, my other colleagues, they have lost their way and they have lost their sense. The discoveries that we have made have poisoned their minds and they now have ambitions far more than what we had intended in the first place. I, uh, I had trepidations about myself and Lizan pursuing our research out here because I worried that when we, came, when we came on this trip that it would be their opportunity to do even more, more and worse work, work that had proceeded even under my nose. They, the two things, first of all, do you know anything of what was being experimented on in the pools below Altbrook University. This is new news to me. But it is something that only came out in our arguments recently. From what I understand, several months ago, shortly before myself and Dr. Bean left on our expedition, carcass of a creature was brought to Altbrook University for study by Freed and Rinks. But it was also of the interest to some of my other colleagues. They had told me something about it. And I had known that they had been doing experimentations with creatures. But you must understand that all of us have been carrying on clandestine work at the university for several years now. I just did not think that it had gone to that level of madness. The creature that Everett Freed was experimenting on is one felled by me and my comrades here ourselves. And at the time that we originally slay this creature, it took a small army to take it down. Whatever experiments are happening there, this creature is extremely dangerous, and tinkering with it could make it more powerful and more dangerous. It already has. And you've said it has escaped. Yes. Freed confirmed as much in an argument that he had with Veers and young. The four of them have mad ambitions. Ideas and experiments that, well, 
from what I can understand, Young Veers, Rinks, and Freed had been experimenting on the body of this creature, collecting samples from its fluids, trying to use it as a source for their various occult magics and experiments. We've all practiced some kind of research to this, so I thought nothing of it at the time. It was only when I started to suspect that Freed was experimenting with resurrection and reanimation that I grew concerned, but at the time, my own research was my own preoccupation. I know now that Freed had, for some time, been able to create creatures from the dead, creatures that he set upon me most recently, and to try to get rid of myself and, and Bean before we could escape and expose his work. My next question then for you, Dr. Mueller, is where is Lazan Bean and the other students? I don't know. Where were you separated? Freed set his creatures upon us in our camp after an argument that Bean had with Veers and Young. The monsters attacked us, but I was able to use my knowledge to protect the students and Bean long enough for us to flee into the ruins. Protect the students? Yes. You think that was protecting them? Bringing them into a forest with a dragon? When we came here, Bean and myself, we had made an arrangement with the forest serpent. One that had kept us safe and able to pursue our own work here for weeks, months, even. Veers, Young, Rinks, and Freed had disrupted that. The dragon was never of any in of interest to, to us, but now it seems like the four of them plan to replicate whatever experiments they did with the creature that you slew, a creature that has escaped them. Do you know where, was there anywhere else that Bean may have fled to? Or is it possible that they were captured? We need as many allies as we can to go against Freed and the other apothecaries. The only place that Bean thought that we might be safe was by seeking shelter from the dragon itself. But oh. from the dragon? Like using the in, dragon in as the shelter. dragon's lair. Precisely. The one that you have made a deal with. We were separated though in the ruins, and I took my, my I took several students that I could, and Bean took. I believe the others should be with her. Hopefully, if the others have survived. I'm going to be blunt here. Corbin Whitaker was one of the students. Yes. He's my son, and you brought him into this mess. Madam, your son is a talented student and he understood the risks. He is a grown adult and can make his own decisions. He's never done anything in this world. You took advantage of his naivety. Madam, I think you give your, you, you do your son great discredit and a great disservice by speaking, him, speaking to him as such. He is a brilliant young man who is entirely capable and understood all of the risks involved in coming on an expedition of, of this nature. I hope, for his sake, that he is alive. And I hope, for his own sake, that you will not use this as an excuse to call a brilliant mind of his own curiosity. I can respect his curiosity. I can respect his mind. But what I cannot respect is you, as his teachers, putting him in a situa situation like this. And you know what? I think you're all mad for coming here and doing this. All of it. We, our work is at the forefront of the history of the magic and the worlds between. I wouldn't expect you to understand. I don't need to be questioned by some, 
some mercenary at the service of a king. Our work here is, in, is important, and your son understood what he was signing up for. I did not deceive him. How dare you? Listen, I don't know how you figured that this would be a good idea to come to the forest and make deals with an ancient dragon to just what, get knowledge? Knowledge is important, but it can hurt. I've seen what too much knowledge can do. It's good to understand, but y'all have pushed the boundaries too far. Fine then, live in your ignorance. The sacred flame does teach us to be a light, to learn the knowledge of this world and to be guided by its path. That quest for knowledge is noble and true. That you, that for ignorance festers in darkness. Ignorance turns into fear and superstition. <sighs> if all believed as you did, we would be in swallowed by darkness. <sighs> we might have. I don't believe that ignorance is the way. I agree we should educate ourselves, but it's what you do with that knowledge that is dangerous. Yes, and you speak of your son like he is a mewling infant bar barely out of the cradle when he is a talented young mage with questions about the world and his place in it. And clearly that's been taken advantage of. Think what you must, but circumstances force us to wor work together. Does she speak for you, your majesty? I will say that she is worried about the well-being of her son and the fact that you cannot give us a clear indication of his well-being uh, reflects her passion. We seek him and we hope to find him in a better state than we found you. Please tell us anything you know about their whereabouts. We must find him. I encourage you to direct your anger towards my would-be colleagues who, were it not for them trying to upend my work, undo what myself and Bean were doing here, then your son would be perfectly safe right now. Mueller, I, I understand what you're saying. You have to, first of all, Rudy here has been through a lot with her family. We returned home. Rudy's one of the greatest warriors and greatest mothers that I've ever known. And to return back to her home and see it disheveled and her family gone, knowing that one of her children was taken into this forest who we've been hunting and tracking for several days on end. I don't know if you have any children of your own or I'm certain you had a family or have a family, but the danger around what's going on in these parts and what that could mean to a family is obviously going to bring out emotion. Yes, and Nicholas, Dora, Elmo, they have parents, and I did everything I could to protect them, and I will do everything I can, can to protect them. It breaks my heart that I was separated from Dr. Bean and the other students. I wish that I could have done more to do that, but I protected who I could in the, in, in the moment. Circumstances have not given me the easiest decisions. I hope that you could respect that. You know what? What's done is done. Let's move forward and find the others. Can you take us? We have a way to find, we can find our way to where the dragon's lair is. We have a guide. It is this small kobold <laughs> who <laughs> serves us. <laughs> he steps out from behind me. What is the deal you have made with Trithesia? That was Dr. Bean's purview. But we had had several treasures, magical artifacts that our benefactor had provided us with to offer the dragon in exchange for safe passage. Who was your benefactor? I am sorry to say that their anonymity was an important condition of their financial support. 
Why, why do I instantly? Do you not know or do you choose not to share? I don't know. I mean, I have a theory already. Then. I just assume it's the Queen of Thieves. I don't know why. I think. I don't know. She has money and wealth and likes to remain unknown. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just paranoid. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we steal a bunch of her chests? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we have all that going for us. <laughs> if you take a. We will f find our way to the lair. Would you come with us to find Dr. Bean and leave the students somewhere safe? But we're safe with them right now. I have no idea. <laughs> the... I don't know if they're safer with us going deeper in or if they're safer backtracking through the woods towards um, I am Secure Haven. I have expended a great deal of my own power to keep myself and, my, and these three students safe. But here, back in my camp, with my other implements, I may be able to at least keep us safe here. I don't think I can be much help uh, against a dragon, but I can offer you a few protections and wards to help you along your way. But I am very concerned about what, well, about what my former colleagues have in store. They mean to poison this dragon in some way, to incapacitate it so that they can harvest its blood, its vitals, and use it for their own experiments and purposes. Mueller, I, I think that you're right, and with everything that you've done so far, we need somebody to protect the students. If you stay here at the camp, the other people that we find, when we find them, not if, when, we will be able to tell them to return to the camp where you will be here to protect them. The three of us will venture further in. Find your colleagues, the Dr. Bean, and save the rest of the students. Once we've gathered our strength, we will move against Freed and the others. We won't let anything happen to Trethesia. Very well. The, the situation is delicate, but I will offer what healing and aid I can. If you are wounded, I can help you here. Actually, we're pretty, pretty. Okay. Where were you before used, we yeah, took them Yeah, we could have used. Um, what did? What are? Can you give us a semblance of the gifts that you gave to Trethesia? What was the nature of their power? Some valuable gemstones and magic items. Okay. Mm. Maybe we can recreate some of the... If I recall, perhaps it was a, a circlet, a, a shield of some kind. I believe a few magical wands, maybe a blade. I have uh, my old... Dr. Bean seems to think that the, the dragon has quite a hoard, but... Uh, Deep beneath, she believed that, she thought that it would be, she worried that it might not be impressed terribly with what we offered it, but it was enough. I have an old ragged cloak that has magical properties. Perhaps dragons like ragged cloaks? Probably not. Oh. Shiny, they like. Trithesia, yes, indeed, likes the opulent. Gemstones that which glitters. I put my ragged cloak away. I have rope. I'm to understand that emeralds are a particular favorite. I don't have any. Uh, I. I have oil. Some studded leather. The studs are shiny. No. No. Well, I mean, hopefully, we don't have to offer something to get people out of her hair, you know? Perhaps she'll see that, or perhaps they will see that as a blessing. We're, we're here to take the people under its watch away. Mm. Uh, therefore, doing it a service. I guess you stay here. We will venture again into the ruins. 
and we will find your colleagues, the good ones, and we'll dispatch of Everett Freed and the others mm. and stop them from whatever occult dealings they have. I only hope that they have not advanced too far. I worry about what they are doing and what they are planning. So do we. I begin to empty out his half of the bag of holding into his, everything that I grabbed, sorry, this is all your stuff back. I'm Mm. just gonna give it to you when you, when we found you. May the flame protect you. And he casts bless again on each of you. Perfect. How long does bless last? In this case, um, it will last until your next short rest. Okay. okay. Very strong. Yeah. We, uh, Kippers, I, I do apologize for the delay. We head back into the ruins. Um, Dr. Muller asks, where will you go? What is your plan from here? I think it's to march straight to the lair of Trefessia at this point, if, uh, and hope that the deal that you made, or that being made with them, uh, extends to us as well. And if not... We help the dragon dispatch of those that turn, go against it. And if we move quickly, we can do it before they make their move. Trefessia may be reasoned with, and there are reasons why Trefessia may want to work with us rather than devour us on sight. And I just hope those are reasons enough. Tread carefully. I've never dealt with dragons before, but I hope we see you again. Likewise. Good luck. Flame be with you. And also with you. See you later. Okay, so you're going to head to the lair. The entrance? I guess so. Take us, Kippers. You carefully make your way through the ruins, skirting the center as you head towards the base of the Evertree. Now I want to remind you that the Evertree is so large that if we were represented in scale with miniatures, it would take up the whole table, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, the, The actual trunk of the tree is so large. Thus, as you come upon the edge of where the, the, the tree is, what begins to happen is there are, are massive weaving roots the, the, that burst up from the ground and sink back in such that you can clamber under and o- overneath them. And here is where one of these large roots has broken open and hollowed out. And so what the massive tree trunk that you're seeing here represents is not the ever tree by any sense, it's too small, (laughs) right? Um, But represents where a root is going into the earth and you can imagine that above it is the broken off section hanging above that then where the three of you are sitting is the ever tree itself if we're looking at the the map here to paint that sort of picture. Mm. This is the place where Trethesia and her brood allegedly enter the lair of the dragon. But as you come upon it, there is a strange and disturbing sight. Arranged around this broken root are several large trap systems that have been rigged up. They appear to be grounded by a pair of hulking, mutated creatures. That one beside. Yes. These mutated hulks remind you of several of the monstrosities that you've seen in the haze and in and around Drakenheim. Muscled freaks of nature, 12 feet tall, that themselves carry on their, carry with them basically large harpoon weapons. 
built that, that have been strapped into their mutated bodies. And before them, trapped on the ground in a strange array of mesh machinery are two young green dragons pinned to the ground. All around them are a makeshift surgical array has been set up for there are two figures doting upon these dragons. One is a hooded man who wears a thick mask with a hooked nose in front of it and a chem and a strong nauseating aura surrounds him as he moves between the two pinned dragons injecting ben their beneath their scales with a purple green fluid that he has brewed up you can see the contaminated infection taking root in the two young dragons. Meanwhile, a bizarre sight flits between the two of the dragons, also tending to both of them with concoctions of her own. She is a bizarre sight indeed, for she is a woman, but fly-like wings are growing out of her back as she flutters between the two dragons and her one of her, her hands is strangely elongated and as she wields the, her instruments and you can see that as she injects the dragons with other concoctions parts of their muscles begin to bulge in certain places their features become distorted and worn and the one says to the other yes I think this is going to work. It is going to work. And the other replies, indeed. We will unleash the sickness deep into the dragon's lair. Incapacitated, there will be nothing that can stop us from it. You jump out and say, not if I can help it. Okay. That'd be a really cool moment. Yeah. Really? The, Let's wait a minute. The, the fly-winged woman is also extracting samples of the poison bile produced by the dragons and their blood itself. Um, and you see her take a sample and she combines it with some other fluid and shakes it. And she says, yes perfect and drinks the concoction okay we need to put a stop to this we must stop it now they are continuing their experiments on nature perhaps if we free the dragons it'll put us in trithesia's good graces to allow us to move the students out if they are still in her lair agreed rudy let's go i'm gonna go with your plan I turn invisible, and I'm going to begin to flank the scene. Okay. We're going to go the other way. Flank the other side? Okay. And I am going to walk out as the two of them split to go in separate ways, and I'm going to call out and say, You have trespassed in this forest long enough. I am Wilhelm von Kessel, King of Westamar, and we have you surrounded. The woman sees you, and her eyes go wide, literally. It's like, as you, uh -oh. as you appear before her, her eyes bulge and almost reach out from her face on the edges of stalks, opening extremely widely, and she says, I don't believe it! He's here! And... The other man says, Our benefactor will be very pleased. This is an auspicious day. Everything we've worked towards, everything we've been promised, all in the palm of our hand? How fortunate! Well, your majesty, thank you very much. <laughs> welcome, welcome indeed. Come, come, 
Come, you should see this. We'll explain everything to you. And the woman says, Yes, your majesty. It's very auspicious that we are here. We'll show you everything that we've been working on. It's very good. As she says as she buzzes excitedly about. I am unsettled and confused, as is my normal state these days. Come, come, your majesty. We have much to teach you, much to show you. Put down your instruments. As I said, you are surrounded, and we are putting a stop to your experiments immediately. They, they, uh, the, the woman, as her eyes look in opposite directions and back, back around. I see just you, your majesty. Perhaps this is a deception. Perhaps the dragon tries to trick us to save its brood. Why would I come here alone? Exactly! It's a trick. It's a trap. Hmm, says the other, stroking the strange nose. <coughs> and he hacks up something. And then as he opens the front, pulls the beak off of his mask, he pours the mucus into a vial that he's just hocked up and says, I'll need that for later. And you see oh, his the icker and the, the drool leaking out of his strange warped mouth. Ah, yes, and close, cl- and and then as he goes to close the beak, he pour, pulls out another vial of some disgusting fluid, pouring it into the nose of his mask that he then closes over, and then adjusts his eyes. Oh, this, this is, this can't be right. Are you, he looks like Wilhelm von Kessel, but why would the king come into the middle of the forest alone? It's absurd. Yes. But perhaps we could use him in some way if he's some kind of look-alike. Mm, yes, yes, yes. Very well, your majesty. Come, come. I, I said to put down your instruments. You seem to be not hearing me. You are not to continue your experiments. Really? Why would we do that? She says. Bzz, bzz. Why? Look at what they have brought for us. Such majestic changes. You have harmed children. Your experiments have brought the death of several students of Altbrook University. The people of Altbrook University are upset with the path you have gone on. (laughs) A small sacrifice for science! While they're having this this back and forth, I want to approach the dragon in the net. Invisibly? Yeah. Okay. Give me a stealth check. I feel like, so I'm... You're there. I'm going to flank left. Yeah, so you're like trying to like come I'm trying to, here. I, I, I want to so, go right up to the dragon. Like I'm trying to go up right to the dragon. Past the big ogre? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, no. On the other side. Oh no, I said confidently. That far? Not that far. Oh no! <laughs> Who's yeah. buzzing around over there? <laughs> I rolled a ten. Says the, the 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 mutated woman. That was the dragon that said her, oh no. Her, her eyes tw- twist around, almost going in a knot as they look in, in your direction. Wrath, I see you, I see the unseen. I see everything. The dragon's blood has given me the sight, the clarity, the knowledge. The blood is such power. Ah, oh, the changes, the changes. I'll need more, I'll need more. Ah, oh, this one is mageborn. Oh, yes. We will extract the essence of this one. So she's looking at me. Oh, yeah. I really yeah, wish she I sees w- you for sure. Yeah, she's kind of flying, so. Um, okay, I'm pulling out my sword. <laughs> I, I, uh, I'm gonna turn to uh, Wilhelm and let him know in his mind. Not alone, he sees me. She sees me, I think she's looking right at me. Yeah, I gathered What's that. What's that? 
Oh, interesting. You he hear? I can hear that, you know. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> she says, yes, I think it was, was it this one that let me hear all the voices? I hear all the voices, all the things you think. Oh, yes. Yes, I know. You mean to murder us, but we'll murder you first. And then we'll know. Then we'll know. Um. Well, Dr. Young, do you think that we should just end it here and now? And... Dr. Young responds, Yes. Yes, I think so. <coughs> yes. We'll need to make sure we're ready for the dragon soon enough. Roll for initiative. Is Rudy still hidden? Oh my goodness. Give me a cell check. No. No. <laughs> I like how your answer is no. <laughs> I drop my horn and then I step on it. <laughs> Check out that advantage initiative roll. Nice job. Ooh. Six, six, six. Really? Yeah. Ouch. Yeah. Yeah. But isn't reliable talent give you uh, ability checks at 10? Only if I'm proficient in them and you can't be proficient with. Uh, Do I get bless on initiative rolls? No. Oh, nuts. <laughs> oh, only if you're proficient. Got it. Yeah. It's not like jack of all trades. No. Got it. Although it does make me think about taking the skilled feat, which is not a normal feat that I would consider, but it gives me an auto 10 in whatever I pick. Oh. Okay. Because of the rogue. Wilhelm? Uh, that's going to be a 9. A 9. That's my advantage. With a plus 8 to initiative, that's my advantage. Okay. Rudy? 12. 12. Rap? I also have a 12. Okay. I will. Fascinating. Long live the Fascinating. king. Fascinating. Well, as, uh, as the group of you approach Dr. Veers fluttering in, in, in the air upon her strange fly-like wings, um, cackles <laughs> as, as her eyes mutate uh, and uh, shift, uh, shift across almost being the, um, the, the very locus point for her, her various spells and her her magic. And she will begin by uh, by casting some of our very, very fun uh, new new spells. Why did I why, why did we make these? <laughs> <laughs> this is your fault. <laughs> um, and I feel partially to blame for this. <laughs> yeah, and she will begin by casting on Wilhelm. Oh no. What, what is it? Grievous Wounds. Okay. okay. Do you remember? Do you remember Grievous Wounds? Uh, ish. You, she momentarily strips Wilhelm's physiology of all resilience, enough that a mere scratch can become a terrible injury. Until the end of her next turn, Wilhelm loses any damage resistances and immunities. It becomes vulnerable to all damage and makes all his saving throws with disadvantage. Just don't get poisoned. Oh man. What did she hit me with? I feel weak. <sighs> it's that that it like shrinks all your muscles and everything. Yeah, I feel like I just I feel like I've been like sick for like a month all of a sudden. You know, like when you try to do Wrath, yeah. it is your turn. Wrath, get that bug off me. Uh, um, is she a person anymore? Give me an arcana check. Is she a humanoid, mostly? A 19. Whatever she has done to herself has rendered her a monstrosity. Got it. As I, I was approaching the nets and she saw me, mm -hmm. can you describe how these nets are holding down these, uh, They're steel yeah. nets that are binding the small dragons to the ground, but it seems like the dragons are also quite sick. They have been contaminated with something that the apothecaries create. So the netting is, were it not for whatever they have done to sort of incapacitate the dragons partially, these nets probably would not be doing a very good job of holding them down. So heal the dragon is what you're saying. I'm going to attempt to 
shoot her a bunch of times with Eldritch Blast. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> um, can I? This this ogre thing. I'm based with it, aren't I? Yeah, you are. I <laughs> shouldn't have got so close. Uh, <laughs> that changes everything. I'm gonna turn to it. This horrible monstrosity behind me. Mm -hmm. And I want to cast Dominate Monster. Oh, on on it, it's their creation. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Uh, I fail my saving throw. So I turn to it and I say, "Get it, get her." So uh, while the creature's charmed, we have the link. Um, uh, attack that creature, um, and so I just command it to run after it. Okay. Um, yeah. It, uh, it. It. It will. And it's... that is my turn. Okay. Uh, Rudy, it's your turn. Get her. Can I get the? And I'm gonna have. Uh, and I'm gonna have Bruce fly up towards to help. So I can get right there. Um, and I, I, yeah, I definitely want to just start swinging. <laughs> I just run in, like, not even saying anything. I'm just like, <laughs> um, yeah. We're not stealthy anymore. Motherly fury. Please stop. You know? um, and I'm going to take some hits. Okay. As you approach the plague doctor that is Dr. Young, Feel the diseased aura that emits around around him. Uh oh. It saps you, poisons you, and being just around him, you have disadvantage on attack rolls. Oh. But oh. you get advantage because Bruce is helping you on your first attack. So keep that roll. And he's immune to being poisoned. Yeah. So. I lost all immunities. So. Yeah, you did. Advantage, but disadvantage. Yeah. I can hold that. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, I mean, I guess. What'd you roll? I get the a twenty. Oh, okay. It's like I crit. Keeping your <laughs> crit. Like, okay. Uh... Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Advantage and disadvantage cancel each other out. She rolled a twenty. Do I need to roll the bless no, or no? No. <laughs> Just for funsies, I added two on there, but okay. Um, get it. Yeah. So maybe Young didn't quite see you coming. You crit so much. <laughs> I get a lots of variable rolls in this one. Um, so that's 30, no, 41, I think. 41 damage? Oh my 12 gosh. 12 plus 18 plus Okay, so from one hit? From one hit. <laughs> As you strike in, in into him, a gout of, um, of toxic blood sprays back at you. Uh-oh. Uh, and you take uh, 15 points of poison damage. And I am poisoned, right? Yes, and you are poisoned. Okay. So this next one's gonna be with disadvantage, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. You can do it. Power through. Uh, 17? Uh, that is a narrow miss. Oh. oh. Uh, I got one more. Uh, that is 25. A hit? Yes. Yeah. Ah! Ah! 23 damage. Okay. Nice. And you take, oh, ouch. You rolled oh. your blast for the narrow I... mess, right? No. <laughs> it's okay. I won't worry about it. Uh, you take 21 poison damage. 21. As his toxic blood sprays back at you. Oh, the, and then I don't like how he sprays you. <laughs> I'm going to. I'm gonna sh use my bonus action to shift into my wolfish form, gaining 19 temporary hit points. Okay. Roar! Nice. Alrighty. Well, with the savage attacks coming from Rudy, nice. but the vulnerable right. Wilhelm before him. Uh, um, 
what he is going to do mm. is <laughs> you're fine probably I got so many so many of our good spells that we made these are really excellent I really <laughs> feel like that I, you, yeah let's... it's the, the 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 problem with choice you have like so many options mm-hmm choice paralysis Okay. I mean, why go for Wilhelm when Rudy's? I has think Maxie? what he's going to do because you're all so conveniently close. Oh no! We he's group. cast Storm of Contamination. Oh. Counterspell. Okay, you can try. I don't know if it's gonna work, but um. You have to add your your spell casting ability to do it because this is a sixth level spell. Be careful though, because I it's think like the DC equals ten plus the spells level. Yep, and you add like... your int mod. You have to just a straight intelligence check. Okay. Now would would you have to do it at disadvantage because you're poisoned? Correct. Oh. Give it a go. Why not? You can do um, it. Um. So what is it? It's it's um, intelligence. What's the spell level though? It is a six level spell, so, so it's DC sixteen. 16. Plus a one. Nope. No. Oh, okay. okay. Just a try. You, um, all right. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. The magic it's still okay. happens. We can, <laughs> we can let it. You create an arcing bolt of eldritch lightning that strikes a target of your choice you can see within range. Rudy, multiple bolts then lead to the target up to five other targets, each of which must be within 30 feet of the first target. So that's all, all of you. Uh-oh. You can each make a dexterity saving throw. You take 12, 10d12 lightning damage on a failed save or half as much on a successful one. Wilhelm, you make the save with disadvantage because you have, and you'll take double damage. But I'll also take half if I make it because of evasion. Okay, roll it. And that, uh, so I have disadvantage because I'm poisoned, right? Yeah. Okay. 17. And Bless doesn't do anything on this? Ble you do add Bless to this. <gasps> Twenty-one. Twenty-one? Eighteen. Well, and Wilhelm? Twenty-five. You all succeed. Oh my god. High fives. And I take no damage because evasion. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so it is still 10 D12 damage, which I wish I actually had this many D12s, but you're still gonna take half damage. I said you need uh, so I accept half damage. Oh wow, that's two twelve. As okay. contaminated lightning courses through my body. I just roll out of the way, weakly. My hair, because I'm transformed oh, no. into my wolfish form, just stands up all staticky. Are you okay? Oh yeah, you're okay. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. You're just a fluffy wolf. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> Too much static. Can't. Oh my gosh, I heard 30. <laughs> but like half, right? Half? You t you two are taking half, I'm taking none, thanks to evasion. Even with your condition? It, your, your, the condition is about saving throws and vulnerabilities. So it's 92 lightning damage, or 45 on a successful save. You okay? So I mean. So I'm... Wilhelm, you did not take 180 lightning, lightning damage. No. <laughs> well, if it's any consolation, what's my uh, what's my con my con save on dominate monster? Uh, DC 20. Yeah, DC 22. Sorry. So I have to roll a 19. Yeah. You can do it. <laughs> ba ba! I get an 11. Oh. So I, so my, <laughs> so I go attack him and he goes, I get hit by lightning. It's like, yeah. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Um, and with that, uh, we go to Wilhelm. Is the spell that's weakening me, is that, is it being concentrated on? Like, no, it, Grievous Wounds is a one round thing and I blew it. Okay. Well, well okay. I mean, it still applies. I still could get you. But yeah, you're still vulnerable to all damage. And I've lost all my resistances. Uh, resistances. And immunities. Okay, in that case, I'm gonna, seeing Rudy run in, get sick, 
attack this apothecary and have acid explode out of him. I was, I pull out my sword and go to run, see Rudy do that, put my sword away. Oh yeah, you would have taken double damage from that. Yeah, that would have been cool too. Yep. Yep. I would have just instantly died. Um, so anyway. <laughs> That's how you kill the game. <laughs> thanks to evasion. Thank you, evasion. I love you. Um, I'm going to steady aim and fire at um, Young. Okay. And we'll add that in. Uh, 24. Uh, that does hit Young. Nice. Thirty-four damage. Oh, yeah. uh, Young is grievously wounded himself. Yes. And I immediately, with my repeater crossbow, fire my second shot, getting a twenty-one to hit. Also, uh, it strikes true, hitting Young right in, in in the chest. For another nine damage. All right, Young is extremely wounded, and he cries out in pain. Ah! Ah! Doctor Veers, do something! They're killing me! Is Bruce still alive? Or would he oh, have taken Bruce one would have been taken lightning? out by the chain lightning. For he, sure. But he would have yeah. definitely eaten some of it? Yeah. Okay. Bruce, no! I will destroy you and then summon Bruce back. Okay. With little, with, with relative uh, ease. With that, uh, the. Um, so this guy is no longer dominated. Uh, yeah, it lasted yeah. about, what, like a, a one second? Did not one last second? Long at all. Like yeah, 0.5 that, that seconds? Did not. Uh, so the, um, what, uh, what he's going to do here is, uh, come right over here and, uh, uh, beat you up. Uh, I'm going to do first attack as Entropic Ward. So he's going to take disadvantage. Okay. Uh, so as he comes to swing So that turns me. a 16, in, so a 16 on the die to a 15 on the die, so a total of 21 to hit. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I get hit. So he punches you um, with with his big meaty fist, um, and Ow. then um, slaps you upside the head. Uh, so you take um, thirteen damage. Slaps you upside the head. Oh. Um, getting a eleven to hit. Miss. And punches you one more time uh, for a twenty four to hit. Oh yeah, that's a hit for thirteen damage. I just realized I shouldn't have gotten a second attack because I steady aimed the first one. So you can give okay. him nine points of damage back. Mm. Very good. So he starts I just start getting beat up by this giant ogre monster undead thing. This other one is gonna go and it turns over on its back and fires its harpoon gun at Wilhelm. Uh-oh. Uh getting a twenty two to hit. Yeah. Uh, Wilhelm, uh, that is going to be 11 piercing damage, which is doubled because you're vulnerable to damage, so 22. And I will uncanny dodge it to bring it back to 11. And I need a strength saving throw. Oh, wait, I get to add... Good, this is going to help. Also a disadvantage. Yeah. So don't worry. I think you can do better than a 3. <laughs> which doesn't do anything. Uh, so I, I get a 5. You are harpooned towards the, the big meaty mutant. No! My so then as you are reeled in, he punches you twice in the stomach. Oh. oh. For a 20 to hit and an 11 to hit. The 20 hits. For 13 damage as he punches you in the gut. Ouch. Uh, and he is, uh, yeah. Um, oh, my kingly gut. <laughs> and you land prone. Hmm? 13 doubled? Yeah, 13 doubled. Yeah. Oh, twice 13. Yeah. But we now go to the top of the round with Dr. Veers. Um, Dr. Veers says, Dr. Young, try not to die. <laughs> uh, no. As she laughs maniacally, uh, she will fly around. Uh, and let's see, what is another lovely apothecary spell I can inf inflict upon you all? How about... Ooh. Am I back to regular damage now? Yes. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> it's very important for me to know that. Okay. How about this? Ooh. Let's go with... Should I go with Septic Shock? Yeah, let's do Septic Shock. Uh, on... Ooh, or... 
Vile necrosis. You feel like you're ordering from a menu yeah, at like I a know, restaurant that so you've never lovely. been to, but it's like super hyped up. Okay. I think uh, she- Ooh, she's something good. looks good. Yeah, vile necrosis <laughs> though. I think we're gonna go for vile necrosis on Rudy. Uh, so she makes a ranged spell attack against Rudy. Oh, that was a d12. Uh, getting a 21 to hit. Can I shield? It's a ranged spell attack. So no, no. I think you can. Well, let's, read, <laughs> let's read this for a second. I got one. Unless shield is only a weapon yeah, attack. Until the start of your next turn, you have plus five bonus to AC, including yeah, against the triggering attack. Yeah, it just ups your AC, so yeah. It well, works. That's my last first level spell slot. So. Uh, she grits her teeth. Uh, uh, as you block the vile necrosis, the be- the sickly beam of debilitating energy oh, uh, from good. from affecting you. In that case, we go to Wrath. Um, oh boy. Uh, <laughs> I choose to. I don't know why I'm laughing. I'm sorry. <laughs> don't laugh at me. I'm getting punched in the head by the thing that's supposed to be my friend. Um, we got it. We're, we're gonna lay it all on the line. Um, I cast mass suggestion, uh, and I'm gonna target the two abomination creatures. And I say, "You will let my my friends and the dragons." Go. You will you will release the uh, yeah. You will release my comrades and the dragons. Uh. Okay. Uh, I gotta make wisdom saves. Wisdom save DC twenty one. Uh, they both fail. Uh, so they're gonna the US. So the suggestion is release the dragons and my friend. Okay. Wilhelm. Also a king. Anything else, Rap? But more friendly. Uh, nope. All right. Rudy, we're over to you. Um, I am going to, well, let's try this. Let's see. Tw- do we have a 20 foot? Radius? Yeah. 20 foot radius? You is can it, do the, is yeah. A this is a 20 foot as well. What, are you, what spell are you casting? I was gonna think fairy fire. Okay, yeah. Fairy fire would be able to get one target, basically. 20 foot cube? Yeah, everyone's spread out. Hmm. Okay, I won't, I won't worry about that then. I'm just gonna take some shots against okay. the apothecary uh, in front of me. Kill um, him. And disadvantage and bless. So I'm still poisoned. 18? It hits. Yeah, yes. the bless. Choking on the, the, the poisonous aura of the of the apothecary, you are able to land a solid blow. 25 damage. Ugh. But his poison blood gets you back for uh, 13 poison damage. Nice job. He's still kicking? He is. Mm, all right. Do I use bless on everything? Right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, 18 plus 8. Uh, How much damage? Oh, get him. Get him. 29 damage. Your axe buries deep into his body, Uh-oh. which begins to shudder and rupture into a series of boils, much like the other infection creatures, as he explodes in a shower of infection, of, of infected, uh, uh, an infected mass, basically, oh. um, erupt, er, releasing a um, horrible, uh, uh, a horrible array of, inf- uh, of basically poisoned, infected plague. Uh, so I think uh, when he explodes. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's ever died from an exploding monster, though, right? No, no, never. It's no. never happened so in the series of our. I guess it's just Rudy. In it. Sorry, Rudy. Okay. Cool. Okay. Who is that young? Is that young? That was young. Young. Now he's old. Uh, Rudy. (laughs) um, Thanks, man. You can uh, roll a Constitution saving throw. It's dead. Disadvantage. Bless on this one. No. Yeah. Bless. No disadvantage. Oh. Yeah. 
And plus, yeah. And it's plus. a saving throw, yeah. yeah. There's con. Mm-hmm. Survive. Uh, 19. You do succeed. You do take half damage. How many hit points do you have? 127. Okay. So uh, you do end up taking... Um, uh, it's 50 damage, so it's half to 25. Okay. How many hit points do you have left? 102. After the damage? Okay. Because this would have killed you if you were under 25 hit points at the end of doing the damage. <laughs> so it's pla- he basically exploded in a plague wind. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a thing? Yes. I'm so so glad I'm far away. I'm far away from him. That was a spell? Okay. Technically, as, oh, a, okay. as an ability. Um... So that was two, two of my attacks. I don't think I can get to her. She's flying. Yeah. How throw, far up is she? Throw a shovel at her. Feet. Throw a shovel? Yeah. She's 20 feet up? <laughs> I mean, I could throw my axe, it just wouldn't do much even if it hit. Yeah, but it's not a shovel. Yeah, but like a shovel is just so demeaning. It's not even a weapon. It's just a shovel. Uh, you know Dig what? This. For now, I will just second wind as my bonus action and get some uh, get some more hit points. Okay, Wilhelm. Can I stand up? Yep. I stand up. Twenty back. And then, as I stand up, I'm going to attack this creature right in the belly. Oh, he's looking to. He's helping us now. Oh, right. Yeah. He lets me go. Yeah, he's supposed to let you go. Okay, well, seeing that he seems to be nice and glancing over at Wrath, who seems to have, like, magic glowing eyes on the creature, I'm going to run up and... Hmm. If I bonus bonus action dash, can I like climb onto this little and mound here? Jump behind her and get her in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Give me an acrobatics check. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, that's gonna be a twenty-six. Uh, that's a hit. So you leap up be- behind her and, and slash her through the wings. Uh, 21. 21 damage? 21 to hit. Uh, it's a hit. Oh, did yeah. I? No, I, yeah. No, you rolled acrobatics. I rolled yeah, acrobatics. it was acrobatics before. Yeah. Whoops. Oh, oh no. no. My guy. We can do this. They're just people that take potions. They're just like you and me. <laughs> they're, they're, there's nothing wrong with her eyes at all. 43 damage. Yeah. She cries out in pain. Anything else for your turn? Uh, as I, I guess since I jumped and got her, I would I would like land okay. there. over there and then I'm gonna turn and fire at her. Okay. Oh, uh. No, I bonus action dashed. Yeah. So I can't. Crying out in pain from being stabbed in the back and seeing that Young has died, she pulls out a glowing potion from her kit. It says, I'll kill you all! <laughs> and drinks it. And as she does so, she starts in growing to massive proportions, mutating into something that resembles a colossal armored beetle with a cross between a person. Oh no. Oh, oh my god. Is she still flying? No. <laughs> but she is flying in the air towards Wilhelm. <laughs> As she transforms. And crying out in rage, uh, she lashes out at both um, Wrath and Wilhelm, making three attacks against each of you. Oh my gosh. Uh, getting a 21 on the first attack. Against who? Wil- uh, Wilhelm. Okay. Uh, a 20, uh, sorry, a 17 on the second, and a 26 on the third. Two hits. And against Wrath, I get a 27. Oh yeah. 
Uh, 25? Oh, yeah. And 10. Oh, thank gosh. Uh, so, uh, each. each of you, uh, it is... Um, oh, my gosh. Each hit is 20 damage. We're going to half one of those. Oh, I didn't half any of it. Yeah. As, as just with uh, raw uh, fury, she she rips into both of you with, with her massive mandibles and claws with a complete berserk rage. And... Uh... I believe I made my uh, I, I, my con was uh, ten on both of those. Is it half? The you damage? don't have to concentrate on mass suggestion. Oh, I don't. I don't believe you do. Gosh. Uh, no. Woo. Just keep doing your work, big guys. All right. With that, it is Wrath's turn. Uh. <laughs> I want to try to. Can I? Oh, man. Oh, the helpers. Sorry, it's their turn. The helpers begin ripping the netting off of the dragons. Doing great work. Yeah. No, no. What um, are you going to do? I cast Dimension Door. OK. I'm going to take the wonderful and um, uh, inspiring Wilhelm. OK. And we are going to travel. Get out of there? Way over here somewhere by okay. my other helper. Getting away from the awful beetle-like creature. We have to put her down. Oh, I know. Look at her. Look at her eyes. <laughs> eyes. Just, the eyes are the minimum. As soon as the eyes came out of the hat, I was like, "No." Nope. Yeah. Shut it down. Shut it down. Okay, that's my. Uh, that's my turn. Okay, Rudy, it's your turn. I do the opposite thing of what you guys do. And now I'm gonna run towards her. Okay. <laughs> and start, uh, start, start getting her. With supernatural reaction, as you enter her reach, she oh, no. attacks you. Oh. Uh, only getting a 15 to hit. No. Okay. You can tell that in her enraged state, every time you attack her, she attacks you back. What else are we gonna do? <laughs> Just hit her harder oh, than gosh. she hits you. Uh, yeah. Uh, twenty-three to hit. Twenty-three. It does crack through her beetle-armored hide. Woo! She attacks back with twenty-four to hit. Can I use my last second-level spell slot to do a shield? Okay. Cool. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so damage wise, 24 damage. Okay. She's wounded. She ah! still bleeds in this in this form. She still bleeds. Get her. Uh, no, that's like a. Do you still 11. have disadvantage? You, you don't have disadvantage anymore. Oh, I thought it was poisoned. No, no, only while you were around. Uh, young. Oh, okay. Um, then I roll will... a d6. Okay. Hold and we'll on. determine which of those two dice is. I the don't one. remember what they were. I'm sorry. They were a 16 and a 19. And a 16 and a 19. A yep. 6 and a 19. Six. Yep. Just roll a d6 on a four plus. It was the higher one. Five. It was the higher one. You hit. You hit. Okay. <laughs> and I hit you back for a 23 to hit, which I don't think hits through the shield. No. Okay. Uh, that's a 20 damage. Okay. Finish okay. it, Rudy. I'm just gonna need this one, I got one. Oh, that's a natural one and plus a two, so no, but I'm gonna action surge. Uh, she so. attacks you back, critting you Ooh. for 40 damage. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. Oh. Action surge! Go for it. Oh, I need this. Oh, I crit too! <laughs> so, yeah. so, yeah, <laughs> as, as you swing under and land right in, 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 into the front of her carapace, she punches you in the back of the skull that re that resounds through your body um, for for the um, bell ringer of a blow. 32 damage. Okay. She attacks back. Amazing. Getting a 22 to hit. The shield is still holding, protecting you. Oh my gosh. I have two, two more. Two more. Yeah. 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 And a 19 plus a 20. Yes, that is a hit. 20 uh, to hit, so I don't hit. Nope. 
Uh, 20 more damage. Okay. This is the ultimate bout 16 of to like, hit. Rudy Did attacking I get a 24 this? to hit? Uh, that meets it, yeah. Okay, 20 more damage. And... Did you hit on your last one? No. 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 Um, do I have any other... It was very impressive, Rudy. Yeah, I'm impressed. Uh, These two actually, titans. Hold on, let me write this right. And I'm right against her. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't used my bonus action, so I'm going to use my long tooth shifting strike, which, while shifted, um, which I shifted at the beginning, um, I can use my elongated fangs to make an unarmed strike as a bonus action. <laughs> All right, go for it, fighter. <laughs> Rip uh, out her throat. Go for the weird eye. Uh, 11, but a natural one. Uh, okay. Um, the natural one is missed. I get a 23 to hit? No. Not no? a shield. Okay. She's still going. She's still going. Brutalized by your onslaught and you in return. How many hit points you got left? 62. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Even after the 40 damage crit? Yeah. Oh yeah. She almost has 200 long, hit points. I think so. Yeah. That's unreal. Rudy is unbelievably unreal. Yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> okay. Unbelievable. Just, yeah, okay. I'm pretty sure. I can go a little bit further with it, with this. Okay. With that, um, Wilhelm, it's your turn. Um. What's the okay? What's the rule with steady aim? Is it next turn that I can't move, or is it the same turn that I can't move? Uh. Only if you haven't moved during this turn. Okay. You gonna steady aim it? I'm gonna steady aim to give myself advantage. So while Rudy and this monstrosity are just having like a kaiju battle. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I'm like trying to aim my perfect shot at the creature's like throat. All right, go for it. Come on, come on. Yeah. Uh, 19. That's exactly what you needed. Whew. Bless. Thank you, Bless. Bless has been clutch. Bless has been great, yeah. 37 damage. It collapses returning back to the broken form of Dr. Veers. Oh. So like, as you guys are like, just hacking at each other, I line it up and I shoot, and just as it like, comes over to head to give you like, a double-fisted smash, <laughs> it like, roars out, and the arrow goes like through the roof of its mouth, yep. and then it just like drops. And she returns to her humanoid form, stone dead. I drop to my knees, and I'm just like, ah! <laughs> and I transform back into my regular self. As you breathe a sigh of relief, a distant rumbling stirs deep within the roots of the tree. Oh, no. And that's where we're at for the night. <laughs> I'm so tired. Oh my gosh. We must bargain with the dragon. <laughs> I'm like sweating. <laughs> that was intense. Oh, that was amazing. That was so good. <laughs> Big thank you to Jill, Kelly, and Joe for playing tonight. And a huge thank you to Kyle for all of his amazing work behind the scenes. Thanks, Kyle. And a big thank you to our dungeon master, Monty yeah. Martin. These awful, they're supposed to be just regular people. And the apothecaries are way cooler than regular people. <laughs> yeah, I guess they are awful. <laughs> They've really turned it up. That was really fun. <laughs> cool. Well done, you guys. Um, in our game tonight, we use a variety of incredible assets produced by talented artists. They have graciously given us permission to use them in our tabletop games, and we encourage you to go out and support some of these amazing creators. We have some amazing terrain by Dwarven Forge, uh, miniatures by Hero Forge and WizKids, uh, player character artwork by Elizabeth Perot, and music by Tabletop Audio.
Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store. You can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes shirts, including Troll Killer, uh, Shadows of Drakenheim, etc. Check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. Also be sure to check out our YouTube channel for lots more content about TTRPGs and D&D. And don't forget to check out our Patreon as well and our Discord exclusive for patrons where you can chat with us about all, all anything you want, really. And be sure to join us next Tuesday when we broadcast the campaign on Twitch. Join us from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as an audio-only only podcast as well. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time in Drakenheim.